Hey, yeah, Arise, minions, and Hi. welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for another episode of Let's Void, go. and we're all at 100% ready to rock and roll. None of us are feeling terrible. Uh, that being said, if you guys like what we do here, and you want to support the channel and the show, we are trying to hit 20 subs here on Twitch. Uh, link for that down below. If you want to support us on Patreon and get all kinds of behind-the-scenes things, link for that down below. If you want to join the conversation, talk about these games that we're running, Join our Discord, link for that, also down below. Uh, we're already $5 into our bar, which brings me to the bar. In the bottom right-hand corner, you will see there's a bar that serves two purposes. Purpose one is when that bar fills, Doc has to do whatever the hell she wants to us. Purpose two is every dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these wonderful, amazing, lovely players that you see here before you. That being said, I will turn things over to Dot to take us into space. Space! We're going to space. Um, okay. Uh, no, we're well, not I... going to space. Well, no, we're trying to get the... Fuck out of space. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. Which we are gonna do today because I say so. If I've got to spend damn darkness points to make it happen, so we did spend the last few hours on Coriolis last game in a bit of dire straits, uh, both emotionally and um, our lives were in danger. There were grenades involved, and the the ship was invaded. Is the best way to put it. Uh, I'm dot. Yeah. Uh, we need to hit the bar twice. Cool. Twice? Thank you. What? I mean, kind sure of thank you, but thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I see what's happening here, chat. Um, and oh we're here ice. all at today. Oh my god. We're ice. staying in Coriolis. So weird. So That's the first question mark. <laughs> episode, they spent most of it actually in combat with these assassins that infiltrated the vessel and seem to be rather interested in taking Lumara, Dr. Lumara. Uh, through some combat and some talking down, Lumara chose not to uh, blow everybody up. The captain took control of that situation. Uh, Malik was able to hack some uh, security drones that circled the outside of Coriolis to get a look at the outside of the ship where Tamir was attempting to fix the hole that they had kind of ripped in the hull to infiltrate, um, but instead witnessed his brother uh, kill a man. Uh, and that leaves us uh, in kind of an interesting place where Lumara is a bit on edge after having almost been kidnapped. Wait, what bar number is this, Mike? The look on your face makes me so happy. Okay, third bar, great. And um, after the bodies had been cleaned up by your judicator friend, the, four, the five of you, Lumar included, were left on board the ship. Uh, there were some injuries that needed to be patched specific, specifically um, for, uh, I think Sewell took the most damage for Sewell. Um, Tamir, of course, was able to patch the vessel. And I assume that was a rather tense couple hours as the ship undocks from Coriolis and took its place in line. It was next up, and at the very last minute, thanks to, in fact, I believe a corruption board last week, they were bumped back in line. Jahar Kassar, the man who was said to be last seen entering the emissary's premises, was visited, thanks to information from uh, the crew of the Defiant that uh, to, uh, was provided to their uh, Jin friend, the child. And the child made their way and spent an evening with Kassar, messing with his mind and giving information. And when Kassar was found, they decided he needed proper medical treatment at the monolith on the surface of Kua. And his vessel leaving was significantly more important. And we see a freeze frame of Tau flicking off the ship as it bumps them out of line and back into the queue. And they wait. But when Kassar's ship took off, they witnessed something. Something that Tamir had also witnessed, but maybe in the shock of the moment was not able to process. There seemed to be small pods, coffin-sized pods, being launched from the base of Coriolis. And as uh, most of your instincts are probably telling you, it's being um, covered up by the launching of vessels. So when Kassar's ships left, more of them 
were launched. And there's going to be a very short moment as we see Tau flick off this vessel as it launches towards the surface of this green and beautiful blue planet of Kua. Samir, you have moments if you want to plot the trajectory of these falling pods. You said you were going to let me role play this. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Then I, will say, <laughs> I will say, um, Fuck you, I will say <laughs> the finger comes down and we see the look of a captain as it comes to Tamir. Tamir, give me that trajectory. I want to know where those pods are going. Of course, Captain. And yeah, he'll he'll go ahead and start technology the screen. You want tech? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. Do, this is I not a do tech. I could do science, either or. Um, it's the same. It's the same role. Oh, is this, then I will. I will <laughs> yeah. let you choose. I will let you choose because that's really just how you get the trajectory. Do you use technology mm -hmm. or do you use algorithmic, like you know, math and science, basically? Probably math and science. I don't know. I can't. Oh, 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 great. great. Oh, limited too. Um, very quickly you hop on it, knowing that you only have seconds, um, and you kind of plot it in and all of you watch as the HUD picks up on it. Um, scientific kind of algorithm uh, is placed in uh, geometry at its finest, literally, as uh, Tamir does kind of manual mathematics um, and begins tracking uh, where the trajectory of this is. Now, Tamir, you would know just looking out the front windshield, this is falling in and around a similar location, location as the ones earlier in the evening mm -hmm. that you witnessed from the exterior of the vessel that no one else saw. Yes. And as you track its trajectory, uh, you all watch as it hits hits the planet. Can't really see it once it hits atmosphere. It just burns up. But the HUD shows you that it is not close to the monolith at all. Um, that it's um, quite a ways away, in fact, um, into the jungle proper. And seems to be landing on the northern side of one of the larger rivers that runs through the jungle of Kua. Um, again, two, three, four, maybe five or six are launched and they all head in the same direction. And then you hear it. The voice over the intercom. Vessel Defiant, prepare for launch. Vessel Defiant, you are up. Prepare for launch. Confirmed. Everybody strap in. Nah, already done. Oh, so fucking uh, glad we get to leave. Now, the coordinates you were given for landing on Kua are at the monolith. Yeah. I am going to go to the monolith because Tao would know that you don't land on the surface, you land in the monolith. Or you land at the monolith. Uh, so I'm going to go to the coordinates. Um, the monolith. Uh, what? Where is it exactly? Is it in a place that I've been before, or so the monolith? Because I know it's, it's a large. It's city. huge. It's, like, it's 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 it is actually an ancient relic. There you the go. monolith is here from the original people of the of long before humans ever came here. The monolith is as old as the portals themselves. Nobody knows who built it or what it was used for. We instead have repurposed it. Um, and it's become, become this epicenter of politics and luxury. And, um, and that's because Kua has, of course, atmosphere and air and is as close to Earth proper as we know it. Um, at the base of the monolith has slowly developed a rather large city. Um, the city is known for everything from trade, um, but if you live on Kua, you live at the base of the monolith or either in the monolith because everything else on Kua is jungle. Okay. Um, so the coordinates that I was given for the monolith, is that just general docking? Yes, it thing? takes okay. you to the, to the city. Basically... General, you have been approved to dock. You basically been approved to dock at the monolith. That's okay. what that's what you've been given. Um, there's nothing to say that you, I guess, have to. Just know that you have approval to be there because you, again, you need the approval to land on the surface. Yeah. So I'm going to go there. I'm not okay. going straight to the surface, but um... uh, as as we 
start our descent down. Um, I'm going to say, uh, so Kassar went in front of us. Um, he was visited by the Jin last night, as was I. Um, from what Craig uh, decided to tell me, it looks like uh, I'm, Kassar I'm, is definitely... I'm sorry. What? Craig? I'm giving him whatever name. The Jin didn't tell me his name. That little boy. It's, it's like the feral cats on Coriolis. If you name them, they just keep coming around. I think I already crossed that bridge when I invited it onto my ship. But did you not complete the task already? I did. Why is he continuing to bother you? Is there something else he needs of you? Maybe he likes me. I don't know. Must be my winning personality. I think I'm going to throw up. Um, please use a bucket. L Lumara, who is, of course, always lurking, goes, oh, are you not feeling well? I, I just cleaned the lab. You can come lay down. I'd be more than happy to run diagnostics. I just look at her for a minute. And then you kind of can see him trying to hold something down. Please go away. I can treat that. You know, please, there's, there's a shot. Please, of, I could just go. Please go away. But if you would let me, help I'm going you. to throw up on you if you do not go away. She takes like a minor half step back, but like she's not leaving because everybody else is here, <laughs> and nobody's actually forced her into the med bay yet. So she's just gonna kind of give I, you space, but she keeps looking at you like. She could help you. I grab my nearby trusty bucket, put it in my lap, and curl down into a ball and just kind of just huddle there. You know, that could be because um, you have a, a, an infection. Um, you may want to let me take a look at some of those wounds. Sewell, you're no good to us if you're sick. Go let Lamara take care of you, please. Yeah, let me take care of you. At this point, Sewell is in a very, very difficult position. Uh -huh. He's at a crossroads in his life. And uh, he swallows the little bit of throw up that he had in his mouth, puts the bucket down, and pulls his sleeve down to cover up the wound, mm -hmm. and just says, you know, <clears throat> I think it passed. I think I'm okay. Um, but that doesn't solve the fact that you are injured. Um, I should still maybe just clean it, just, just a little. Oh, my God. I look so, at Hal to see if she's going to be any merciful. I I am glaring at you. And he, fuck. I, <laughs> I get up and I take the bucket and I just like walk towards the med bay without saying anything. As you as you're walking off, you hear my voice following you. You're no good to anybody dead. I just mutter, I'd rather die than have this doctor look at me. <laughs> She simply lays you on a table and you begin to hear the diagnostic, which now with this rather uh, high-tech kind of med uh, bay aboard the ship, uh, begins to just like, lights kind of running over you. Uh, she snaps a glove and you guys hear just a snap of the glove before the door like zoops closed. Um, then Tal will come over the intercom because everybody needs to hear the information because we cannot, we, we all need to share. Um, open comms throughout the ship. Everyone hears conversation. Everybody can talk back. Um, uh, whoa. Anyways, um, the mystics are obviously being held at what seems to be an old medical center. Um, I look at Malik. You can't trust Kasha at all. Did you get a copy of the video as well? Did I, Dot? I don't remember. You did not. No. Uh, no, I just sent it out. We're kind of in a high stakes moment. And well. I don't, I don't think I mentioned this. Uh, there was, uh, they, they knew about us. I was being hacked back. There was someone preventing me from sending the data out, which is why it took so long. 
I imagine Kasha told them all about us. Why, Kasha? <sighs> From the moment I met them, there was just something off. I don't know what it was, but when we were in, when we were in the apartment, she was blocked for searching DNA, but suddenly she was able to do it because we found it. And then you sent that to who? Who who did you send that video to? Uh, I sent it to your father. Okay. How long did it take for her to show up? Them? I don't know if it's... I mean, less than an hour after we wrapped everything up, I guess. They just took the body. We have no video. Great. They seem to only be uh, blocked until we say something. Then suddenly they have exactly what they need and they can give us more information. I think that's funny. I mean, I usually try to avoid the uh, consortium police, but I mean, that doesn't sound normal, I guess. I don't... I don't know. I, I don't trust her at all. Them. I don't trust them at all. And I am pretty sure that let's be honest those people came for one thing you know what it is mm -hmm. they specifically didn't kill any of us who would know that we had that thing there was one person I mean I I did sign a paper in the psych ward. They don't... The psych ward doesn't care. Well, I mean, it's a it's a record as well. So no, I guess, but who know. would know that... Who would know that there was a need to collect the thing that they were looking for? That's fair. One person. Lenara, can you press the button? The calm button? I want, I want to talk... It's already, talk. I can hear oh. you talking. It's oh. already open. Oh, um, right. Uh, I, I agree with the captain. It seems very, very strategically planned that they were specifically after her. And I point to Lenara, realizing that probably no one can see me. Um, she smacks your finger and goes, lay down. She's uh. trying to stitch up your, your wound. I think it's very suspicious, honestly. Again, like, from a perspective of a professional, unless they were extremely lucky to just drop in one specific part, it seems like they knew where she'd be, what's going on. They even and, had the layout of my ship. And, and not even that. I mean, how would they have known that Lunara stays in the med bay at night? Even, no no signature from a psych word would write that. Are they already in our systems? Malik, have you run like a, a full diagnostics? I mean, I haven't, but Kasha has been on the ship before. Well, so if what you're saying is true, and she may have known. Kasha was probably within earshot when Lamara told me about what she can do. Probably. She, I, I didn't even realize, but I mean, she was kind of like a shadow when we were walking all around doing all the investigations. No, so she who, who she knows? she escorted me from the meeting with oh. your father, Tal, and that's when Lamara told me. Oh. So. What is? Do you think that Mister Tuma would be in danger? I mean, Dad can take care of himself. Well, uh, well. I question mean... is is he on their side or ours? yeah yeah do you think perhaps he's a threat 
Soul, if you go after my father, I'll kill you myself. I never said I was. I'm just asking a hypothetical question. Um. Is, is this going to be a problem? Um. Certainly hope not. Hey, Tal. Yeah. I know how uh, awkward family shit can be. Uh, and he kind of like looks over at Tamir. Who looks away. But um, <laughs> you remember the conversation we had? Yes. It's still your choice to say it, but it seems relevant. What was the conversation? So that comes to our next thing. How we know where the base is and who's there. Tamir and I had a shared vision through uh, the Priestess Sholi's eyes. My sister's on that base. She's part of the guard there. <sighs> okay. We're not 100% sure if she's a mystic or not, or if she's working to help or foil them. But Sholi made it seem that she was there to help, but that it her cover may be blown soon is was it implied well all what? the more reason for us to get down there and figure out what the fuck is going on with her for the sake of caution perhaps we need to be very careful of who we trust including uh surely yep Priest oh, is okay cool okay who cool, thank god surely because i mean this sounds quite like the, a bait tactic if she knew she can contact you specifically. I'm mm. I'm just trying to throw up all the options. It, it Sholi seems didn't reach dangerous. out to me. I reached out to her. And just so you know, she blessed this ship before we left Coriolis the first time. And I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why we've made it this so far. True. Okay, I'm just speaking off of caution. I think, and, uh, the, uh, I think the moral here is trust absolutely no one, even if it's your family, if they're not already on this ship. Well, I already do that, so yeah. Yes. She slams you back down, and she probably slowly set forward talking I'm to them. I'm going and she, to... She goes, I'm almost done stitching you up. Why does um, it take so long to stitch up? heals you. <laughs> See how that happens? She heals you for two points or uh, two back uh, cool. to your health bar um, as she stitches you up and bandages you. Um, I kind of like admire kind of in her work. Yeah, you're in recovery. It's well done. Yeah. Um, it's it's well done. But so you're a rather observant individual. You're not empathetic as much as you just read people instinctually mm -hmm. as part of the job, as the job has been over the years. And she's a very good doctor. Yes, fourth corruption bar. I'm going to crash this ship into Kua. We're dead. What? Why? <laughs> We're dead. But she seems, this conversation, she seems distracted. Had it not been for the new installs on this vessel that gave her two extra die, uh, it wouldn't have been a very good stitching. Uh, her mind seems to be elsewhere. Um, do she, I notice? Do I pick up on that? On the uh, fact you pick up on this. That her, she looks distant. Um, you don't know if she's listening to all of you or if she's elsewhere in her mind, but you do know that, like... Can I mute the comm button? Yeah, you can reach over and mute the comm button. She kind of snaps her gloves off that have a little left of I would like to them. do that. I'm going to mute it real quick so no one okay. else can hear. It's just me and well, okay. no, whatever her Mara. name is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hey. Uh yes are you here she looks down at herself and back at you i i hope so it's hard to tell though because even when you die you still have uh, that's not that's not what i'm that's not what i'm talking you um mm. i haven't been the nicest to you and i acknowledge what do you that mean? okay maybe you didn't acknowledge that um even through all your batshit crazy moments, you do still seem to have some grasp of functionality. And right there, in the past 12 seconds of stitching me up, 
you were distant. Oh. What were you thinking about? I think I'm supposed to say thank you. But it also sounds kind of like an insult. So I don't really know. But I can tell you that it is true. Um, I'm a little... Um, my mind is elsewhere. Where is it? Well, like less than two hours ago, somebody tried to kidnap me. Correct. Is that what you're focused on? Or are you focused on something else? I'm concerned. I don't entirely understand why. And, you know, they used to, <clears throat> when I was at the sanatorium, they would come in uh, the middle of the night sometimes and just take me for treatment. I see. So kind of like leans back in a sense of like kind of connection with her for a minute. Mm. She was, mm. and you know, it's so weird. I really just thought, uh, um, I should start with gratitude. Thank you for saving me. She kind of smiles and a genuine smile. Um, and and I does this smile to... look different from like her other smiles where she looks like a crazy psycho? Yeah, it's genuine. Like she means okay. it. She she genuinely means it. I'm making all these mental notes to try. To, okay, I want chat to know. I'm not just derailing her. Okay, I am trying to find separation in her personalities to see how she does under stress, confusion and all these other emotions because she is a valuable asset and I need to know this stuff, okay? So she is. fuck you, chat, all right? And as she's as she's talking, you can tell that she's pulled the gloves off that had your blood on them and she's pulled them off the way she's supposed to with like the blood on the interior of the gloves. But she's like, you can, you're watching her thumb yeah. them as if she's like moving the blood around in the interior of this plastic and um, it's gonna, calming her as she speaks in some way. I'm going to reach and pull like, the, I'm going to pull the, bl the bloody gloves away from her. Uh, um, she she lets them go, almost right. not even realizing she's doing it. That she's like thumbing it, um, and, and uh, she goes back to the question. She says, "Yes, um, thank you. You, yeah, I should, I should hey. thank you for saving me. I, hey, hey, listen, it's so silly of me to even think about this, but I'm just, why wasn't Malik there? Oh my god, I unmute, <laughs> and I'm just instant instinctively, I'm just I unmute and I I close it back up. I close it back up, what? and I take a minute to breathe. And I'm like. He was preoccupied with other avenues. It might have seemed like he wasn't there, but I can guarantee you his actions were intended to keep you safe. His skill sets are different than, per se, Tal or myself. I know he's amazing. It's not what I said. Okay. I said they were different. Right. <laughs> but listen, get know. a grip. You seem like a rather grounded male. He because his face kind of just goes. <laughs> where is this conversation going? Is there something wrong with me? Oh, he takes a moment to think. You asked for this. Sword. I just I can just picture <laughs> Sul going. Oh, we can hear this too. No, he muted, muted it. He muted you, it. He, he, he oh, put the okay. pipe back on. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's the see, most is, that's the yeah. most Sul thing to say. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> Listen, Lenore. Lamora. I, I, I mean, I am I not pleasing? I feel like Malik doesn't like me very much. Oh, listen. Um, you're different, <laughs> but different doesn't. You have a set of skills that are very valuable. He um, doesn't like me for my skills. He doesn't really like me at all. I'm feeling very lightheaded. Do you happen to have any uh, med medication? I, I she reaches to... over to a drip that's already hanging, a saline drip, and Fuck. plugs it right into your arm. Ow. Uh, You'll feel better in a second. Here, yeah. a cracker. She gets you a cracker. Where did you keep, get? Keep, keep talking. Um. Uh, <laughs> she's really into what you're saying. She's she's hanging on your every word. She needs you to answer this listen, for her. I, Is something I, I, wrong with her? I, I, I'm look, oh, fuck. Uh, I'm not the best to discuss stuff like this with. I guarantee you, though, you are no more different than each and every one of us on this ship. Wait a second. Fuck. There's another woman, isn't there? No, that's not what I said. Who is it? That's Soul? not. 
That's not what I said. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying who is it? Th- Sewell, tell me who is it? There's no other woman. Relax. There's no other. This no, there's, there's there's there there's no other woman. Uh, th- th- listen. Th- oh fuck! I can't do this. I uh. <laughs> she she blocks the door a little bit, not in like a terribly threatening way. Like she doesn't like bear, but yeah, she kind of like puts like, herself between you and it, and she says, "I'm serious. Who is it?" I, I can promise you there is no other woman on this universe that will look at Malik the way you do. She goes, then why doesn't he like me? And she like <laughs> rips all of this stuff off the counter and you guys hear it smash against the wall. Whatever conversation you're having I um, is interrupted by glass. I, I'm, I'm right there. Hey, bolting let's, straight let's, there. Hey, calm, calm, calm down. No, no, I guarantee you he does. Relax. Um, she he... goes, I don't get it! Mamara, Mamara, what's wrong? Oh, thank God. Uh, Tal? What's, what's the she matter? She has this kind of crazed look in her eye. You can see that there's like broken things everywhere. She's dumped a whole tray of stuff over. She's bleeding down her hand from a, probably breaking the glass with it. Um, Sewell's all patched up. I, He's attached to an IV drip. I slowly approach with my hands up. Lamara, are you okay? Um, she goes, I'm fine. I'm just fine. I, she like pushes past you a little bit and like storms out. You can see the like blood drips. Um, she she leaves and goes somewhere else in the ship. I turn on Soul. What the fuck did you do to her? I had a conversation. Obviously, it went well. I attempted to congratulate her and to see how she was doing. I think I need to reevaluate this book. And then I pull it, and I what? in my back pocket I have the, <laughs> the social interact book. I love chat. That's like, don't tell her to relax. Right? She's a no, crazy woman. Do not tell her chat. to relax. Does telling someone to relax ever work? No matter who it is, does it ever work? No. <laughs> um, Listen, tell I. Perhaps she wasn't the best choice to attempt. Oh, and it, for a minute, Soul's like rethinking. He's like playing back the entire conversation in his head. No, yeah, I did everything the book said. What did you talk about? Well, she seemed distant. So okay. I asked her, I told her she was a little bit more crazier than usual. That's definitely not okay. Keep going. Um, And then I I muted the comm because I, I under, from my understanding, people like privacy. So you're I, correct did that um i don't know i said oh she asked about uh malik asking if there's another girl i said i said no other girl looks at him the way you do um you know to be honest with you at at a certain point my mind kind of stopped recording the conversation so what did I do wrong? You are the one on board who needs to have a book on how to talk to people. Next time someone asks you a relationship advice, tell them to talk to doing? me or to Mir. Okay? Okay. That's and fair. I walk out back to my seat. I like I just sit there in and the I so we'll do, I'm doing the right stop, thing. Stop. I say Malik. Can you please talk to Lamara? Uh, uh like just in general or I feel like she needs to hear from you. And maybe she'll be able to calm down or something. I don't know, but what what um what what happened in the med bay? Apparently, she started asking about you, and um, Sewell's answer upset her. I walk out of the med bay, taking the drip with me. <laughs> Am I allowed to take this off? Um, you don't see Lumara. Um, you're basically holding it up. It's not on like a, anything oh, that's wheeling. Okay. So you're like holding it because it was like hanging on a rack. Um, so you're holding it up because that's the only way it drips. And it's just kind of, um, you know, sci-fi. It feels great. Arm. 
Yeah, you're feeling a hell of a lot better, Sewell. But she's, uh, if she's on the ship, which obviously she is, she's not on this floor. Uh. Please. Before she destroys the rest of my ship, she might even be going straight to your room. Oh, no. Uh, Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I I tried, Malik, sorry. I think that is the worst. Ugh. Hey. Whatever oh, it is, she's upset because it's it's in regards to you. So the two of you need to work it out, whatever it is. Great. And he clicks the seatbelt and gets up. Hey, you get up, and sure enough, you enter your room. She's there. She has something in her hands. A present. Hey. She goes, who gave you this? I I don't even know what that is. Somebody left you a present, Malik. And she, like, turns around and looks at you with these big, whelped-up teary eyes. And she goes, who gave you a gift, Malik? I don't have any idea. I, I, here. I talked to four people. They're all on the ship. card on it. There is a card on it? Great. Okay, this is so perfect. This is bu- this is definitely our first corruption yeah, bar. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I talked to four people, and they're all on the ship, so... She slides the card out and flips it over. Um, it has Tao's name on it, like from Tao. It says, uh, it just says Malik. <laughs> you know what to do with this. That's perfect. Tao. It just said Malik. <laughs> uh, no, it, it says Malik. You know. know what to do with this, Tao. <laughs> she slides it back under. Tao, gave you a gift? I guess so. What's in it? I don't know. It's not my gift to open. And she like puts her hands out and kind of starts to like blubber a little bit. She goes, "Open it, Malik." Why? What is? What is happening right now? <laughs> uh, He's having a, a clearly some emotional uh, reaction to all of the things that have happened to her uh-huh, this evening. On uh-huh. top of learning that there's a gift in your room. You know, no, no, I'm here. I'm with it, Dot. I don't. Malik is not. <laughs> so Malik he, may not be, but he takes the audience it. does. Yeah, he takes it. and He's like, okay. And starts to open. I assume it's not wrapped because it's Tal and Malik. So he just like opens the box that it's in. What is it? What is it, Tal? Oh, um, it is. What is it? Uh, shit. Where is it? It's a signal jammer. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah, he pulls out this device and he's like, "Oh, what is it?" I don't know. You don't know? It has Signal Jammer 5000 <laughs> written on the side. He, he, flip, he flips <laughs> it over and goes, he goes, oh, 000. it's a Signal Jammer 5000. Jam signals. Okay. Yeah. What, what? And he like puts it on the desk. Does Tal usually get you Signal Jammers? I mean, once you have one, you kind of only need one, right? I am. So this is your first signal jammer from Tao? I mean, I am the communications officer on the ship. Jamming signals is my job. You know, about that. You know, I thought communications officers were supposed to be good at, you know, communicating. Yeah, with computers. Well, what about with people? Not so much. That's what we have Tao for. I do the computer stuff, and then she talks to the people on the other side of the computer stuff. Why don't you like me? I mean, you're fine. You don't like me. I mean, I checked you out of a... Out of... Hospital. hospital. Yep. <laughs> she says that... <laughs> I, I know, and that's why, I, you know, you came back. And so that's why I thought... You come all this way to get me off Coriolis and... And then you asked me to be part of your ship. And so I'm here, and you don't even show up when they try to take me! Actually, I was I was right outside that door. And he, like, points to the med bay door. I was, on the, I was on the computer. But you that, didn't care? That's my job. My job is to do the computer stuff. Yeah, well, Malik, my job is to fix people. 
So the next time you need to fix it, don't come to me! And she, like, pushes you to the side and, like, she goes, I hope you like your gift from Tao. I, I don't usually get hurt. That's why I work on computers. And she, like, she storms away to more of what where kind fucking... of the cargo hold is. And you're left with this opened gift from Tao. What's <laughs> happening right Single now? Single Jammer 5000. You can tell she's still bleeding. She's dripped on your floor. She's bleeding? She's bleeding from where she, like, raked all of that glass and stuff in the bed oh, okay. off to the side. Right. Uh, she's, like, bleeding down her hand a little bit. Um, and she heads off. And I... I don't know if Malik is too stunned to follow her about what the fuck is going on here. Uh, but he, he definitely puts the signal jammer down and just stands like, what the fuck? In his room for like a good, a good minute or so. Uh, and then he like wipes up the blood uh, and then like pockets the rag and then follows after. Malik. Yes. As you wipe up the blood. Gross. Maybe you try to turn away. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you have to do. Like, mm -hmm. keep it down. Mm -hmm. But as you begin to wipe it up off the floor, um, you I mean, notice he's he's, he's fine with blood. It's just, you know. Well, yeah. this blood is a little thick. Oh. Or than usual. Like two, it's like two C's or like two. Yeah, like um, mm -hmm. like it's um coagulating mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. kind of weird way. And its color is not this, um, especially on the sterile floor, uh, is not this rich crimson. It's kind of a dark color. Cool. Uh, black ickiness. Um, as you kind of wipe it up, you don't really realize it until it gets like on whatever fabric you're using to kind of, or mop it up or whatever. As yeah, you wipe yeah, it across yeah. the floor. Of course. Uh-huh. It's changing as well. Like the longer that it's exposed to air, it goes from red to black. Like, and that's not normal, right? Duh. It is not normal. Okay, I'm. Blood I'm should not turn black. I'm. I'm no medicurge, but um, pretty sure that's Same not blood. not great. And that's yeah. not normal. Mm-hmm. Um, oh man, now I'm even more torn whether I go or I do science. Um. Uh, actually, I'm going to... Tamir's at his engineering console, wherever he is on the ship, right? Is that correct? Yeah, we were probably talking during I imagine this. You're not <laughs> I imagine all three heads pop around a corner as Lamar yeah. burst out I, the bedroom door. I am going to like reach over to my tablet and text Tamir on uh, his terminal, like a private conversation. Uh, and I text him... Uh, I text him... Uh, there's a rag covered in blood on my desk. Analyze, please. Send. Um, and then I leave the tablet where it is, and I follow out, uh, Lamara, um, we should talk. Fuck. Uh, and then he follows after wherever the sound of this you tornado the goes. You follow blood trail. Um, so for, for all of you, you're on... Um... The cabins and the, the stasis chamber are all like on the same floor of your vessel. I'm fix. I'm in the med bay cleaning up. The med bay is on the top floor. Is on the first level. It's here. Um. The uh. Let me turn the right one. Yes. And then uh the second floor down is kind of where all the chambers are. I guess. Uh, Lumara stepped out and went to the stasis chamber, and you see that in the amount of time it's taking you, she has already entered one and has oh. programmed it um, and is under a cryostasis freeze. Um, before she went under, she managed to write two letters in the kind of misty, cold, foggy glass where she's asleep. It says, F you. Oh, <laughs> of course it does. Uh, she is still very much bleeding. There might even be a little bit of blood like in on the glass from where she like wrote it on it um but she has put herself into a cryo sleep uh i mean the controls you are can on turn the, it off yeah i was yeah, gonna say the, turn it off. the controls are on the outside uh like t malik sighs heavily Don't you uh, fucking because do it. <laughs> this is way too melodramatic for him to deal with uh and then he like closes his eyes and punches in the code and thaws the tube um, as, as you thought, um, her eyes kind of waken up a little bit and she goes, 
Stop. I don't want to look at you. Go away. And she tries to, like, pull the, the door closed. We should talk. I don't want to talk. Are you sure? You always want to talk. I know. I don't want to talk, but nobody <laughs> wants to talk to me. <laughs> God, I love you so much. <laughs> Dot's no longer role playing. She's been holding this in for the this is right all of high school self this right is, now. This is Dot. <laughs> this is Dot in the coronavirus. She's not even role playing anymore. Goes, I, I, I want to talk to everyone. I talk. She goes. I do want to talk, Malik. You see that she has a piece of glass that has is stuck in her hand. That's where she's bleeding from, and she's actively like wiggling it in deeper into the skin. You're bleeding. I know. You should. So, um, when the cold tubes get cold, if you have open wounds, it's not great for them because of science. I, I don't it doesn't know. Doesn't matter. Not it's, not like, it's not. It's not like if I just disappeared, anybody would care. I'm pretty sure everyone would care. You're like the ship's medic. Like that's a big deal. Nobody cares, Mara. We didn't have a medic before, and now we do, and it's kind of Stab an important. Stab her, and then they leave her for dead, and then they they put her in a hospital. Like I don't know. Like, I don't know, it wasn't really a hospital. I mean, you got... I'm not crazy. You got stabbed, and then we rescued you, like, immediately. No one left you for dead. We literally I, I rescued lie. you within seconds. You rescued me. I mean, everyone you else was that. there. And I thought that meant something, and clearly it doesn't. You brought me all the way back from the dead, Malik! And she's like, you can... As she gets angry, you can see she just pushes this glass, like, deeper into her hand. She's bleeding on the floor, now you can hear it flip. Yeah, it's because I didn't want you to die. Because you like me. Yeah, I mean, you're all right. Like, you seem like a relatively reasonable person. And you were a doctor on Hamura, which seemed like a really important job to have. It was not really. Oh. I don't really understand the medical profession, so if anyone says they're a doctor, it just sounds really important. I work at Space Spy, so... You don't want me here, do you? Like, in the tube? No, I mean, I'd like you back on the ship proper. Really? Yeah, like, you're our, yeah. I, you're our medic. No, I don't care about the ship. Well, I... Do you want me here? <clears throat> like, personally? Yes. She, like, digs the glass a little deeper. Uh, fuck. <laughs> um... Malik pauses for probably, like, too long. Like, a second too long. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I want everyone who's on the ship on the ship. Are you covering up a lie? Do you uh, really want her here? I mean, I, so, it's not a lie. It's just not the whole truth. Malik does want everyone on the ship on the ship. Uh -huh. She is the medic, and she has an important role, and he does want a medic on the ship. And he does not want her to die. And he is also concerned with her safety. He does. He does not want. Hold on. Let me. Let me counter you, Dot, with my with my manipulation. It sounds like that's what's happening here. <laughs> let me remove the computer. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a Douglas point. This is too good. It has to happen. <laughs> Your words sound truthful, but I know they're not. I can tell. No, I mean, like, you're important member of the team, and if you leave the ship, you're in danger. Like, those guys that came to get you, they would have gotten you if you weren't on the ship. So, it's safer for you to be here on the ship, alive, with us, to protect you. Right? Uh, yeah. I guess. Like, we protected you on Hamura from, like, dying. I think I'm sick. Like a, a space cold, or? I don't know. Like, sick? She kind of holds her hand up, and you can see all this blood is, like, coagulating. It's almost, like, bubbling in this kind of weird way as it runs down. And she goes, I don't think I'm normal anymore. Uh, no. You're perfectly normal. You don't bleed like this? Yeah. You don't bleed like this? That's true. 
Um, you know, about that, what's with the, the blood all the time? What are you talking about? Well, you found a pig? I and bought a pig. Okay. Um, and then you, like, had blood on you. And, like, any time I see blood around, and you see blood around... You need to test the new equipment. Okay. Every time I see you Better around... Better on a pig than on you. Yes. That is correct. <laughs> the, the genuine innocence and also scary nature of that statement. <laughs> that is true. Um, I'm just like, I mean, if you like blood, that's fine. I just want to know about it. Something's happening to me. Yeah. Um, Is that where they wanted me? To take me? So... They're gonna take me back to the hospital, aren't they? No. I don't think they were. You know how we had a conversation in the alleyway after our date? You mean the, the one that was interrupted? Yep, the one that was interrupted. Um, you know how you can... I think you said, like, smell uh, the the mystics? Yeah. Tao thinks that the people who took you are some of the people responsible for the mysticides. And so I they want... Mystic? What? Mystic? I'm not a mystic. Why would they want me? Because you can sense the mystics, and they want to kill them. So they wanted to use you like a bloodhound. I would never do that. I don't think they were going to give you the option. I think they were going to hurt you until you did what they wanted. They can't hurt me. I think they were going to try. Let them try. And she like plucks this piece of glass from her hand. It's about yay deep. Um, it's dripping this blood, and when she does, it starts pouring once again, kind of from her hand. And um, she looks at this this piece of blood-covered glass, and she licks it. And she stops, and she goes, "It tastes like death." Uh, Malik does his best to ignore that entirely, mm -hmm. and he pulls out like a small. I don't know what's in this room. Uh, he pulls out like a small pocket knife kind of thing. Uh, and you see him like pull at the shimog that he wears and he like cuts a piece of it off of him. Uh, and then he like walks over and ties it on her hand and then like puts a hand out to pull her out of the tube and says, let's, let's go, let's go get that sutured up. She takes your hand and lets you like bind hers. And um, she has a, a slight smile on her face. Uh, especially when you take her hand and you you uh, doctor her, uh, the role reversed. Um, when you say that, she, she leans in and she kisses you on the cheek. And she says, I'm sorry. It's okay. Let's, let's get that taken care of. She says, okay. And she kind of smiles again, this idea that you're going to take care of her. Um, and the camera pans, rewinding back a little bit to the other three members of the ship who were left standing in a hallway when Lumara stormed out and Malik followed. Uh, I turned to Tamir, kind of my eyes scanning Sewell up and down real quick. You're fine. I look at Tamir. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. Are you okay? You're the one that was right in the middle of the fray. I mean, my shoulder's kind of shit, but it's fine. Um, Alright. I guess let's just get everything packed. Um... Don't forget uh, all the new equipment we got. Um, I'm going to go make sure we're not flying into an asteroid or something. That's the last thing I need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Malik, 
you oh, are... don't why did you say that because we have the asteroid card right yes we do yep <laughs> that's why i'm going back to the fuck, <laughs> fuck. you head back up come to on the... uh you have been cleared for uh for takeoff this is not uh you'll need to manually fly the vessel down to it's close enough to kua there's no like autopilot for this okay uh because of how close you are um and in fact i don't know what mike's showing to the audience but for you guys you can see coriolis in orbit above kua um and so i need a pilot roll from you take your plus one for being a blessed vessel um and this is um gonna be i believe you have maneuverability on this so you actually get let me double check but i think you get another bonus to this because of what you have yeah. Um, yes, you have two antimatter robots, so you're going to get a plus two to um, the maneuverability of the vessel, which I'll use in the landing. So just make a pilot roll for me. Okay. Limited success. Great. Uh, did you roll with the extra plus one for the uh, ship being blessed and the two that was a with a two modifier with a two modifier? So roll yeah. one more d six. Oh. Because you get one for being blessed and two for maneuverability. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just Perfect. one. So just the one. It, this is not hard. You're just landing the craft <laughs> on, on, on a planet. There are no asteroids that uh, orbit this um, or rings that are around this. Um, Coriolis is, is around Kua because it is a safe planet and a safe place to be. And as you fly in, you can't miss the monolith. It pokes up above the skyline, the clouds. Um, it is huge. Um, and the ship slowly begins to descend. Is there anything that Stool or Tamir would like to do before we land? No, I, I think Stool's done enough. I think, I think if anything- He tries so hard. I'm gonna just look over at Tamir and be like, that was kind of crazy, wasn't it? I mean, she was at the mental facility after experiencing actual that, I don't- Oh, I meant the attack. Oh. What did I mean? I guess. You're good, right? You didn't get hurt. They didn't, you didn't, no one hurt you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. No, I'm fine. <sighs> Fucking. You know, this book is useless. And I kind of just throw it in the trash. And then I just start, I sit down and I start strapping in, getting ready to take off. Glad you're good. And I tap, and I slap <laughs> Tamir in the shoulder a little bit. I wonder how long it is before Sue realizes it's not a saline bag and it's a morphine bag. <laughs> <laughs> he starts uh, yeah. acting He's right just right. high as a kite. He's just riding that space dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, it's about I, a 5% I wanna, drift I going on. Take <laughs> back to the sailing bag. Yeah. Am I able to have the sailing bag attached to my jacket? Can um, I like yeah, rig it? I yeah, you can it. rig yeah. it. You yeah. can tape it or rig it so it like hangs off the back of your shoulder so yeah. it's high enough that it continues to drip into Okay, your and arm. I'm going to keep the needle in, but I'm going to reinforce the needle for a little bit. Okay. Um... Yeah, please. That's please. it. That's it. I'm good. That's it. Tamir, anything you would like to do, say, make happen before? Oh, God. Is this the appropriate time or do you want me to wait till we land or like? You do whatever you'd like. There's no appropriate <laughs> no, no. time for you, anything. You have to do everything before we land so we can harass Doc for die. not <laughs> landing on Kua. <laughs> Another okay, okay. episode? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> no, we're landing on this fucking planet today, y'all. Make it happen. I already made um, the pilot roll. We are definitely we're getting definitely on to Kua. Almost to Kua. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I guess like as far as like final preparations go, because uh, Malik definitely gave Tamir a very like nah, dude type look uh, when he went to go pack his exoshell on the crawler. Uh, because uh -huh. who wouldn't want to take their safety blanket with that? Of them, course, yeah. You right? start loading up the crawler. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That was a big. That was a no. No, you can't. You can't do that. Um, so he's gonna, uh, I guess, go back to his room and check out the suit that uh, Tal had gifted him. Okay. Uh, are you gonna put it on? Yeah. Yeah. Because it'd probably be easier to to put it on now than it would be to try to do so in disgusting humidity of place. Yes, because it is a tight suit. Sweat would oh. not be your friend. Oh no, Tamir is going to be so uncomfortable. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, it's very comfortable. 
you slip it on and you think it's going to be, you know, um, it's thicker than spandex. It, it's more like a wetsuit. It's more like a wetsuit, like you would go scuba diving in. So it's a little would, thicker. Would you say that Tamir is now a No, he is not. <laughs> he is not yet. He's a wet warrior. He killed a man. He he's killed a man and he's in a wetsuit. So he's a wet warrior um, for sure. Oh, that's right. Um, and as you pick it up and you you kind of shake it out and you slip it on your body and maybe you bend down to like zip up in all the right places, you realize that something else has fallen out of the box. I know. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, he will go down and, and pick it up and, and read it. It's a note from Tao. Tamir, I don't think I've ever tried to write a letter. Sorry if I get this wrong. Words are not my particular strong suit. My life on this ship has been exciting at times, but never so much in as the past few weeks. I'm pretty sure we should have died several times, to be honest. Out of everything that's happened, my biggest regret is not telling you that you mean a lot to me. You always have a home here. May the deck hand protect you and the traveler guide you. Love, tell. Suit fits just a little better after reading the letter. Or worse. Well, Mike, this is not Malik. Tamir's here for the loves. And it... you are a, such a dumbass. <laughs> finished suiting up. Uh, and what you realize is this suit could potentially be worn underneath the exo if you need to like shed the exo at mm. any point. Mm -hmm. Um, so that you could have uh, both of them potentially on. Might be hot and heavy, uh, but you could you could do it. You know what? If I could reach for this computer, I just want to smack that look off your face. You said it, and Aris made the same. Aris made the same face. Don't just, give me but that. Aris's face is not a smackable. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah, I do not have a smackable <laughs> face. Not as smackable as yours. <laughs> as uh, smackable. Oh, sorry. Sorry. My my face is not as smackable, smackable as Mike's face. But it is not as smackable. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you. There's this moment as you put it on. It fits you like a glove. Um, it's a lot easier to move in than an exo suit. Um, mm. What is this? Which one is this? This is not the chameleon suit. Which suit is this? This is the. This is the chameleon oh, the, suit. This is a chameleon suit. Okay, this perfect. is <laughs> this. The only thing I spent more money on was the crawler. And as you reach behind you and you zip up that final piece to like lock yourself in, you realize it activates the suit. This is a chameleon suit, and you realize that the fibers in this suit, once you kind of like seal yourself in. Uh, almost shimmer and change. You put your hands in front of you and the optical illusion is that they meld with the wall color in front of you. Your hands almost disappear. If you weren't staring right at them, you might lose them. Okay. And, and, and I think... He's, he's going to focus on that for probably a moment too long. Um mm. I mean, it's it's an incredible piece of. It is an incredible technology. Piece of technology. This this is just, um, and yet, despite now understanding and recognizing how helpful this will absolutely be in a jungle terrain, which he's never seen or been to a place so flush with life, right? Um, how exposed he feels in the suit right now. And I think he's going to take the letter and just kind of fold it up and tuck it like deep in somewhere into the suit, but he's, he's going to keep it on him. Um, but he's still going to take his, uh, his Shemag with him, whether or not that helps or hinders the suit. I don't think he cares, but doesn't matter. That's always good to come with him. Sure. No. And as you're loading things up, you hear this shuffle of feet and the voice of your brother and the undeniable voice of Lamara. She seems much happier. Uh, she seems to be <laughs> explaining to Malik how best to stitch up a wound like this. Um, and then you hear, because it's kind of through the hull of this this crawler, because that's where you're, you know, you went, in, oh, no, 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 you're not in the crawler, you're in your bedroom. So it's through the door of your bedroom. Uh, you hear him shuffle past, and then the feet stop. Lumara grabs you, uh, Malik, and she says, something's weird. 
like weird how? Like weird mystic weird or like... No. Something else. And she looks at your brother's bedroom door. She doesn't knock. She doesn't touch the comms. She just looks like as if she can see through the metal door. Malik, as you finish wrapping this schmuck around your neck or putting it on your person to take with you, as you stand, I mean, Tamir, as you stand in this uh, rather uh, vulnerable position wearing a suit that somebody that cares for you deeply has provided, um, that's going to give you the cover that you need, but none of these things seem to rid the weight and the feeling that you're carrying. It's as if you swallowed a rock and it's still sitting in your stomach. It's heavy and wrong. I'm going to have you roll a d6. Second corruption bar of the night is for Tamir. Fuck off. Second? Oh my god, you're <clears throat> so dead. Uh, Don, I just want to remind you that that's the second out of uh, five now. Five! <laughs> that is... That, that is ridiculous. I think we just take a quick... I don't mean to like cut the immersion, but I just want to. That is, thank you. Thank you guys you. are yes, crazy. Thanks, you guys thank are you. insane. So thank you. You are. Yes. Uh, you guys are really killing. I didn't I mean to interrupt anything. I, I, I just felt like I had to say anything. it. Um, we definitely yeah, keep them busy while I look this up really quick. Thank so you, like for your generosity and your in insane support, but more importantly, your belief that we are doing a good job. Like nothing says more than that. Like you think we are good enough for this and it just it's 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 it's, it's i don't know you what fill our is. hearts with butterflies and rainbows and shit yeah, yeah I, and shit. while trying to kill us so okay. i mean it's fine it's all it. death and butterflies and rainbows and death and blood and and shins and i will say this because uh it's my show and i do what i want um uh because this will be seen in the middle of the show when people watch it on youtube uh like no shit. First of all, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you everyone for donating all that fun stuff, all the tips. Um, there is a push on Twitch in the creator space to get um, actors, the voice actors, the streamers, the 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 role players that you see here, paid. Um, it's incredibly difficult for shows like this to get sponsorship because though you guys are ravenous for the content, it does not draw views for people that want to sell products, which is fine. And we've all accepted that and we love to do it, but we also love the people that we play with and we see the hard work that they do and we want to give back to them. And this nights like this allow us to do that. Like literally you guys are... Like, the money that goes to Twitch and the money that goes to Patreon keeps my lights on and allows me to, like, pay for art and cool shit like that. But this allows me to pay casts like this who are putting their heart and soul into these characters, into this role-playing, to this kind of thing. So you allow us to do what sponsors won't do, uh, which is pay our casts. Uh, because they are casts. They are role players. They put every much amount of work into their acting, their voice acting, their craft, as other people do. Um, so thank you so much for that. Uh, and when people say it's real easy for like Critical Role because they're all professional actors. Well, by paying these people, they are also professional actors. Let me just tell end. you guys. So, you uh, I, I will One you. could also say that this game is sponsored by you. That's true. Okay. True. It's sponsored by chat. And I'll tell you this. We may not we are professional entertainers, I would say. And as somebody that has been in professional entertainment and attempted to be an actor once in her life, um, Twitch and all of you have provided me more pay and more support than I ever received as a freelance actor on the stage or on screen. Mm -hmm. You have given me uh, just as a personal story, the ability to act on screen for people and do the thing that I love, which is storytelling, in a way that the real world never paid me to do. So thank you. Facts. True facts. With okay. that, back to the show. Yeah, no more nice. sappiness. This has been an emotional roller coaster to begin with. What? No more <laughs> sappiness. We're not done with this episode. We <laughs> have at least three more corruption bars. Yeah, we don't more know more what happens with the second which means, one. Which means that I'm spending no, I've only spent one. Darkness point tonight. I'm going to spend um, all my darkness myself. points tonight. And I know I was going to spend them all tonight. Now I don't have to. Um, which means we will have a corruption bar every 10 minutes from now to the end of the day. He's so salty. It's the goal. Because I'm going to get through them. 
Okay. As you sit there staring at yourself, maybe there's even like a reflective surface um, or a mirror of some kind as you look at yourself in the suit. And the suit does what it's supposed to. It chameleons you in this space and you almost lose your form for a second as you stare into nothingness. And the only thing that can play through your mind is the look of fear and dread of the man behind that mask who you killed, who was grasping for air, who froze to death in space right in front of you. And then the empty sound, the void of space, as you watch two men explode. And their bits and their form pass around you. Like that, they became nothing. Everything that they were was gone. And as you stare into the mirror at the literal nothingness that is yourself in this chameleon suit, you have a minute of mania that begins to take over. The darkness. You did something to me or you killed a man. And from this point forward, you are in a state of what is known as melancholy. By the book standard, this means that there is no point to your existence becoming fearless as they see there is nothing to lose by dying. By causing death, you have also overcome any concept of fear of it. So as you head towards Kua, the voices that pass through your head, your own, remind you that if it was that easy for a man to die, to simply slice him open in space. It's that easy for you to die. And more importantly, how insignificant is a life? His life, your life, their lives. And we see Lumara on the other side of the door in this moment of silence as you stare at herself, her ear to the door as if she could hear something or feel something, Malik. She never knocks. She never disturbs. A single tear rolls down her cheek. She looks at you, Malik, and she says, darkness is here. Yeah, there's no way Malik lets that go. Uh, he understands that she's like an empath because that's what the creepy child told him. Um, and he, I think he, like, grabs her by the hand and, like, kind of pulls her away from the door. Uh, and then he, he just opens the door. Uh, and he just, like, leans in, like, as the door fully opens, he goes, hey, kid. I have to see if you can see them. He's in a chameleon suit. The entire purpose is I, for... I don't meditation. think he registers. I think he, like, with her doing that, I think he assumes there's someone in the room, and he mm -hmm. opens it and just says, hey, kid, to see Let's, if anything happens. To see if anybody's there. Like the like the sixth corruption bar, if that's what happens, because that's what happened. <laughs> it's sixth corruption bar, y'all. We just did. You know, did we really we just have a sixth corruption yeah, bar? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we I did. I don't know... Well, I you know what? I shouldn't say that. I could really set us up for some trouble when we hit Kua. Cool. Um, you look in, and for a moment, there's nobody there. Um, mm -hmm. Or at least your eyes um, think there's not. Tamir, you're interrupted by the sound of your door sliding open. Your brother and Lumara stand there. Her hand is wrapped in your brother's scarf. And you hear, hey, kid. I think it, it takes him a moment to just even register a sound. It, it almost seems like a distant echo. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe after like the third or fourth time that the sound kind of mm -hmm. bounces, um, he kind of like just snaps back and uh, uh, looks looks over uh, to uh, to meet uh, to Malik and uh, Lumara. She kind of tries uh, to avoid your eyes, and she stays, not doesn't even enter the door. She just kind of stays out of the door frame. She knows this is not her. She's an empath, but she doesn't know you. Mm, mm -hmm. Right, that's fair. Um, hey, are you ready for Kua? Uh, I gotta stitch up Lumara. She got a she she cut her hand on a, a thing. Nice, uh, nice suit. What's that? 
Oh, uh, this is uh, Cal. He gave it to me. Oh. That looks very expensive. Tao gives everybody something. See? <laughs> she gave you a lab. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there, there's kind of a moment where, like, a light bulb goes. <laughs> that looks really expensive. Was it, like, a special gift or, like... I mean, it was a gift. We all... Soul got the gift, right? We know that Soul got a gift? I mean, I would assume everyone else got one. I can't remember. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said anything. Okay, okay, Did, cool. did, did you get a note that. with yours? She's awful at writing notes. Mine just said, Malik, you know what to do. Tal. Um, Wait, question. Did mine come with the note? No, I actually <laughs> physically she gave handed it to you. It to you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so um, um, communicate. For the <laughs> record, Tal's handwriting, it's not that great. It's it's kind of like I, what I you would we expect. could assume that. Yeah. It, <laughs> not to be that guy. Kind of du chicken scratch. Direct attack. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Love you too, Dome. It's great. Set phases uh, to kill on that one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that that was my return for the eye roll earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm still shaking. Everything's like I had to reposition everything. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, similar. Uh, just kind of explained how to use the suit. Yeah. Cool. That's like. It's like a big deal. That's pretty expensive, right? I I would assume so. Um, it, it is in. <laughs> incredibly generous of here. Did, did you see what it can do? And like, he's gonna like kind of hold his hand out and like try to make body part, like very deliberately yeah. pushing the topic to the suit. Yeah, man, that's freaking. that's like, that's, that's pretty intense. That way you can wear it all the time and not get into combat. That does seem to be what she... I would prefer, um, but I, you know, I, I would still feel more comfortable if I could also bring my exo shell just in case. Can you get the exo shell to do that? No, but it's so. And he looks down, right? This is a kid who probably has no recognition of body worth, right? Yes. Who's always just like wearing kind of like heavier clothing or always in a jumpsuit, right? Because he's work, you know, he's always just working. Um, it's just tight. Yes, it is. It's literally a scuba suit, basically. Yeah, but <laughs> so, so realizing how uncomfortable Tamir is with how tight it is, he kind of like leans in the room and he goes, yeah, but like, so if Tal bought it for you, knowing it was that tight, it means she's trying to check you out in a super tight suit. So like. Oh. You hear like... Lumara say, and she hits a button. Oh, fuck. The door. <laughs> <laughs> like between Malik and, and Tamir? Oh, no. Oh, are you outside the room? I was outside the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, then she, then she goes, oh, and like pushes you in and closes the door. Okay. To separate herself from the Perfect. two. Perfect. He goes, yeah, like you just do like a couple, whenever you're wearing it, just do like a couple push ups, a couple squats. And then, His like, face and then, like, is just flush. And right? then what you do is like, you just, just you you flex red. you flex your core, your abs, and then that's you kind of that's it. And then you look great. I mean, like you look great anyway. But like, just it's called a pump, and that's it's you know it's that post gym look. What, what's your face doing? I I mean, uh, that's. Fine and all, but we're we're about to head to a jungle, and there are people who are dying, and probably should be spending more time on that than worrying about how nice my butt looks. He like he like looks. <laughs> yeah, but like, why not both? <laughs> because. I don't have time to think about that. Well, I'll tell you what. I will think... Hmm. I... Hmm. Uh, will you? I... <laughs> hmm? Great. I, He's gonna just, like, pat his brother's shoulder I, and just, like, open the door again. 
<laughs> really going to be landing soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna figure I'm gonna figure out that one. Wingman is what mm. I was trying to say. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And like he steps out to let Tamir walk out of his own room, <laughs> uh, and then like as as Tamir passes, he like cracks him on the ass. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> "Nice." <laughs> anyway, I gotta deal with Lamara, <laughs> and he like grabs her by the hand again and quickly walks Lamara towards the med is bay. Not there. Oh fuck. <laughs> I think he like what? I think he like whacks him and then like reaches for it and he goes oh, oh shit you've lost her uh, uh, and he heads to the med bay hoping that's just where she went tell yep I knew she was coming <laughs> oh click to you. <laughs> um the camera cuts to you you are actively piloting this vessel yeah uh and you're almost there. A couple minutes you'll have landed on the monolith you're simply waiting for uh the instructions as to which uh docking bay you're going to be assigned to just the kind of the usual yeah and you hear a set of feet come up behind you small feet Mara's feet she hovers behind you you can feel her presence there yes lumara you're a you're a really good person Thank you. And I don't really know what all this is. And she like points. You see two more pods. Like they're kind of like way off the side. You can see that they're hitting almost the horizon on the other side. Yeah. And um, she says, uh, she says, you, you got us all gifts. But yeah. nobody got you a gift. No one ever really gets me gifts, so it's fine. Well, that's not fair. Honestly, it's really just nice to have people on this ship again. Well, yeah, but everybody deserves a gift sometimes. Well, you're my gift, Lumara. <laughs> she kind of smiles and, like, digs her toe a little bit, and she says, it's too bad that Malik doesn't say stuff like that. Malik's an asshole. Well, don't say that. He. I turn around and look at her. He's different. He's still he an cares. asshole. I guess. I think it's kind of charming. Well, I'm. Everyone has their own tastes. I guess. I. I thought I'd give you something. Oh. Is now a bad time? Um. You're like seven minutes out from <laughs> the monolith. Uh, sure. Okay. She comes over. There's probably like a co pilot seat that's definitely not like, you know, equally spaced by any means, but it is there next to you. And she like plops into it very nonchalantly. This um, is... and she spins and turns and looks right at you. Is this a quick gift mm -hmm. i promise okay and she leans in and she kisses you right on the mouth and as she does something happens Tao. um a flash energy um uh, some out of body experience maybe uh this is a corruption bar for the record the doctor will get her smooches. <laughs> let my doctor smooch. Let my doctor smooch. <laughs> um, and that's a good corruption bar. You have a. For the what? record, I think that's Tal's first kiss. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm causing drama. I'm causing drama. Okay, so uh, she she puts yeah, a very too. firm kiss on you. And it, probably because of who she is, um, or who she's slowly turning into, um, it forces a premonition upon you, unknowingly. She didn't know that, um, but it does. Um, you're literally lip-locked with a gin. Um, it's exactly where I wanted to be today. Correct. 
and uh your body goes into that like jolt again it locks in place your eyes roll into the back of your head you think you hear lumara's voice and she says tal tal oh my god are you okay um as it fades off into the distance and you you see through the eyes once again of priestess Sholi. She's very weak. And your body hurts like her body hurts from torture, lack of food and water. She is barely hanging on. But as your mind kind of merges with hers and you begin to have this premonition, what you see is a figure. It has to be the emissary, the ghost. You recognize it, it is not human. It's strapped to a rather rusted and repurposed medical table. They have all kinds of things sticking out of their body, tests running, those kinds of things. And you watch as a figure enters the room. You know that walk. It's your sister. She walks over to Priestess Sholi after simply uh, kind of acknowledging the emissary in the room. And she gets very close to her face and she says, I'm so sorry. It had to be the priest. And your sister looks around and injects a liquid into the IV that they were feeding her. Um, it slowly begins pumping through. There's a sense of panic of the body as it, it begins uh, juddering and dying. The entire um, kind of internal system begins to shut down and you can feel it as if it's part of your body in this premonition. And you begin shaking and as the camera cuts back to the ship, we hear all of you, Lumara scream, something's happening to Tal. I would run over. All of you run to the cockpit to see Tal in mm -hmm. um, like a seizure type state. Um, and the ship is being unmanned and not piloted currently as you are plummeting uh, towards the monolith. And, and that's that's another corruption bar, right? Though? Second, cor yeah, next corruption bar. Cool, cool. <laughs> we got two more to go, gang, and we haven't even landed yet. I think. Good job. Who's going to pilot this ship? Uh, we have six total we had six today right yeah mm -hmm. i used two crazy lamara episode uh a uh, uh, manic for samir yep kiss for lamara yep unpiloted vessel so we got three so left two left two left two left that was two four. left oh that was four don't don't give us extra ones chat hasn't <laughs> earned <laughs> i oh damn um i would um, look at malik and tamir and be like what, what, what do we do? Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't mean to. It wasn't my fault, I swear. I didn't mean to do it. I, I, I was just Lamar. trying to be nice. Hey, hey, breathe. Lamar. Breathe. Lamar. Need... You are a doctor. Please. Please take care of her. Oh, right. We I, need I'll, to get her out of here. I'll, I'll, I'll pick her. I'll pick. Oh, he says, like, a seizure? Yeah, she's kind of, like, um shaking her body. Aren't you not supposed up? to, like, touch or, like, handle people when they're having a seizure? Um. Mm. Tilt them to the side, make sure that they don't vomit and choke on their vomit. Yep. That's, and then you just kind of. You're gonna okay. have to move Tal if you want to sit in the pilot seat. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to take control of the vessel. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, Tamir I will, will take control of the I will vessel. Pick but he's going towel, to then. Malik's. I will pick up Tal. Okay, you pick Tal up, and and she says quickly, um, uh, to the med bay. Uh, okay. I have something for this, and she okay, kind of uh, leads you in. We'll just leave you. Uh, Tal's not leaving. very. Tal's not a very big person either. She's only like five foot one. Yeah, five foot we two. Wait, but she's wait, five what foot one. She's so tiny. She's tiny. tiny. What the tiny. Fuck? She's super tiny, and I you carry she was like her. Five nine. No problem. I'm gonna as I'm leaving, like Lundar leaves first, and I'm like, I have her, and I'm like, take, we're leaving the room. I'm gonna be. I turn back, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna look at Malik and Tamir and be like, fix this, and then I'm gonna leave. No, before you leave, Tamir is gonna grab your shoulder the one with the tattoo and kind huh. of squeeze it. Does right? that 
Ooh, little, it... little, little harder. Little harder. Mm -hmm. Does it do anything if he interacts with my tattoo? He grabs the your arm <clears throat> where it has been put, and yeah. as he squeezes, the pain is there, one, because it's a scar. Uh -huh. It's like any tattoo. If you right. squeeze it a few days after, it's just tender, okay? Okay. But something else happens. Tamir, I'd like you to roll um, your mystic ability. You are gonna <laughs> fuck me up, Tamir. <laughs> I just want to take towels. Malik's gonna to have to okay. pilot this plane. <laughs> you just wanted to threaten soul. <laughs> but okay. Okay. I I rolled it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you did. It wasn't better. That's fine. You're still a mystic. And as you touch the arm, you see it light up like freaking fluorescence from underneath soul's arm. And as it lights up in this vibrant blue, just mm, uh, like literally somebody stuck a glow stick under his his shirt. Um, there is quite a bit of pain. So this is not the scar. This is whatever inside of your arm is being activated. And as soon as Tamir removes their hand, the whole thing goes. I, stops. I, I would assume I kind of dip down from the yeah, pain. Yeah, you almost drop towel. Possibly even the arm goes numb. You're rather strong. I would, I would put whatever strength I could to keep Tao from hitting the floor, and I would just look at Tamir like, what? Does Malik see that as well? Yes. Okay. I kind of give him a glare. Clear. I give kind of give Tamir a kind of a glare like, don't fucking touch my arm. So, One of those kind of glares. Tamir would have probably normally been petrified. He's been scared of you. He doesn't care. Make sure she is okay. Okay, okay. And then I kind of like pull my arm away and then. Yeah, you hear the doctor. Kinda go, quick, like, quick! Kind of like not sure what the fuck just happened. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm it leaving, was a lot. but like my <laughs> eyes are still on Tamir. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, okay, the fuck? And then kind of just make my way. <laughs> okay. You enter the med lab. She's got everything laid out. Uh, she gestures for you to join her. And as the door closes, we're left a bit with a pregnant pause with Tamir and Malik. The vessel is plummeting towards the surface of uh, Kua, um, almost to the monolith. Uh, you see the HUD pops up telling you which dock number you can dock at and those kinds of things, but I'm going to need a roll from Tamir as you take over the vessel. This he's watched dock. tall. He's, he's explored space. The good news is you have tall. a blessed ship. <laughs> and you remember you can turn on the antimatter robots to help with this landing, giving you a plus two to maneuverability. Great, so that's so, a total of one, two, three. So you get three. three additional to go on this piloting roll, which is an ag which is agility based. Kid, can, can you fly this thing? Um, yes. You guys are gonna crash into that the That wasn't a confident yes. Because I'm not the pilot, so it's the pilot, Malik. I would have taken a no for, that's fine. So sit down and help me then, okay? All right. This is monolith docking. Do you, I need you to do my job. I, uh, um, um, I cannot do both. Mon monolith docking. This is the Defiant. Defiant, please send us your codes. Uh, you know that uh, code, code, codes incoming. <laughs> yeah, you like quick type them in. You're like, you guys are trying to play each other's part. Yeah. Tamir, let's get the pilot roll. Are you coming Since in too hot? Yeah. Are you coming in? You do get the three, so it's not uh -huh. like. No, he's coming in hot. You, you realize. This is this is Tamir's dump stat. Agility, because he doesn't have pilot. Yeah, it's Malik's. Malik. It's one of Malik's high stats. Malik, Malik, <laughs> Malik is the one. Tamir my, is, my, is just the big softy. He's a stronger my, one. My agility is a five. Mine's a four. <laughs> Literally okay. anyone else could have done this. You got this. Tamir. Nope. I'm terrified. He's not. And he. Hell runs. yeah. <laughs> As you're screaming at your brother, maybe it is a reflection of everything that you've gone through over the last few hours. Maybe it is this melancholy state where you don't even care about your life anymore. You give this, uh, the piloting handle, this massive tug as the whole vessel stops nose diving and like, oof, um, right as Malik uh, responds. Uh, and you are able to land this vessel. It is by no means perfect. Um, you might even almost forget to put the feet down. Malik may reach to, to click the switch just in time uh, for the feet to land. Um, there is a loud <laughs> as the ship settles on the surface of Kua. 
You're not quite square center on the dock, but you made it. Close enough. <laughs> Holy and shit. The camera pans to the med bay. Sewell, as Tao lays there, like, shaking, um, Lumara is actively grabbing some drugs and some things to help. Um, and Sewell, the ship comes to a land. You can definitely tell because things fall off the shelves. You have to catch Tao yeah, um, and I'll, I'll breathe, do whatever. You know, I'll keep do whatever her in place. Um, and she goes, okay, just hold her still. This is gonna... I don't even know if this is gonna work. She's like, just be ready. Okay, I hold her. I just... She looks down at... At Tao, and she said, and she looks back at Sue, and she goes, "I was just trying to be nice." Hey, focus on the task. Right, of course. And she jabs this the uh, shot fuck? into the center of Tao's chest. No countdown, no nothing. She hits a button, and you hear like, "What?" As it does. It pumps a vast amount of adrenaline right into Tao's body. G Tao, give a warning. There is this slow motion moment as you're having this premonition of your sister slowly killing Priestess Sholi. The whole time, she's praying. This is not the sister that you know. You're still unsure which side she stands on. Why would she kill her? Why would she do this? Your body is convulsing as Princess Sholi's body is convulsing. And your sister looks over her shoulder as if someone has entered the room. She slow motion draws a pistol and goes to point it at whoever is at the door, and as she fires, BOW! You sit straight up out of this premonition. You're in the middle of uh, Lumara's lab. There is a uh, shot sitting out of your chest. Um, Sewell <clears throat> is kind of uh, hands on you and has uh, kind of got you, um, but you're not where you remember. Question, was Sholi praying or my sister? Your sister. Who was she praying to? Could I tell? I will give you a roll for that. That would be an observation because everything was kind of slow motion. So you're trying to like read lips. Yeah, I actually have that. Hey, oh, I had three. Oh, shoot. Okay. Uh, it's okay. No, uh, mm -hmm. I, I had three uh, positive modifiers on it because I never took that off. So those last three are actually not. Another corruption? No. <laughs> oh, corruption is happening. Sorry, no. I needed to make sure. Somebody dropped the word corruption in private chat, and I was like, y'all, chat, hold on until I'm next sorry. week. I was talking to Paul. <laughs> uh, um, so attack. those last three die, including that success, is actually not correct. So it was not successful. It was not successful. Because I, I still had that three in from when I did my pilot <laughs> roll. You are unsure, but somewhere out in the distance there is corruption and a kiss that was meant as a sign of affection and a thank you for who you are an empathetic gesture of a friend was met instead with corruption and the lady of tears cries out into the darkness of space as somebody dies The death card has been played. Oh, fuck. To the fifth corruption bar. Uh, as, as I wake up, I immediately just start crying. Like, just straight sobbing. Shot still sticking out of my chest. Still just I, shot sobbing in the vein. I, I, okay. I, would, I would pull the thing. I mean... <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can pull it out of her chest yeah. pretty easy. I just pull it out and then just, like, give her, like, a cloth. To, like... Um, Lumara um, looks at Tal. Um, and, and she says, I'm sorry. And she hugs you. And, and holds you while you cry. I, I would back off and let them. Crying in her arms, I say, Lupara, she killed her. Oh. Jalissa killed Sholi. What are you talking about? My sister. She killed the priestess who blessed the ship. She goes, I, I don't know your sister or this priestess, but we're here to help, right? And we're here now. We just landed, Tal. Tamir landed the ship. She kind of smiles to give you a little bit of hope. And she said, thank you. And, you know, her hand kind of uh, brushes your face in a, a, a rather um, friendly way. 
and she says, I, I don't know what just happened, but we're here now, and, and we're going to fix it. There's no fixing Shelly at this point. All we can do is try to stop them before they can do that to anybody else. And, and she says, well, I'll say what I said before. You're a good person, Tal. The universe, well, I know the third horizon needs more people like you. And she begins to help you down. I, I just help with whatever I can. Yeah. I don't say anything. Yeah, you help you help probably get tell probably more than Lamara does in honesty. Um, she hands you a pack of crackers. She says, eat this. Because doctors hand out crackers in space. And um <laughs> They're called spacers. They're called spacers. Oh my God. She says, eat your spacers. You'll feel a lot better when it's all done. Um, and she kind of looks out the window of the med bay. Um, which is on the second floor, and it kind of looks down on this docking area. And as the camera pans out, we see the ship dock next to you. It's the same one that knocked you out of line. They are moving Jahar. Jahar's laid out on a stretcher, strapped down. Oh, we can. Can we? Um, no, I'm not. Just because you all want it. Uh, the, the, he's strapped down to a stretcher, and you can see his eyes are wide open, and Lumara kind of says out loud for whoever is listening, she goes, that's not good. Her brow kind of furrows. Tamir, Malik, the camera cuts to you. You see the same thing, just a lot clearer through the front of the vessel. The monolith stands in front of you, massive, far out of your sight line in terms of how tall it is. The city at the base that you are now a part of, and the ship in front of you. Jahar Kassar is laid out on the stretcher. Uh, Metakurgy attend him, uh, four of them, in fact, uh, on kind of on this, this floating board. And something happens. You watch as the straps holding him down break. One of them breaks free with his hand. And he reaches over and he wallops one of the metacurgy upside the head as he rips the second band free and jumps from uh, his restraints onto the ground. He has this crazed, maniac look in his eye. And he looks across from across the other dock right at your ship. He looks... You swear he looks you in the eyes, Tamir, with you in the pilot seat. And he looks right at you. He says something. You can't tell what it is because you're inside the ship and they're outside the ship. And a group of these group of Medicurgy uh, tackle him and they begin this kind of tussle and fight as if they're trying to get him restrained. He's screaming and throwing and uh, uh, fighting them off as best they can. But it is the last figure, one that you know, that steps over the metacurgy uh, or the meta, uh, the doctors that hold him down, and the judicator that was assigned to you steps up with some kind of injector uh, gun and puts um, some medicine into their arm. Their body quickly like goes limp. And you can see as the body goes limp, their head rolls and they eyes never close as if it was some kind of a high uh, powered sedative. And they look straight across, again, right at you, Tamir and Malik, as if they know you're here or are aware of something aboard your ship. You don't know. And they put the body back on the stretcher, strap it down, and it gets lost in the grouping of people as they head deeper into the city towards the uh, towards the hospital that was fucking right. weird that was weird 
That's a lot of weird. That was weird. Sul was weird. Tao was weird. That's a lot of weird in a 15 minute span of time. Tao was not having a seizure. Chances are, she's never had a seizure for as long as I've known her. Chances are, it was just her ability. We should go make sure that she is okay. Malik reaches to his console and makes sure that the comms are off. They are. And then pauses for a second and locks the cockpit door. It's... Malik, what are you doing? We need to go check on Tao. Shut up. Shut up for a second. Shut up, shut up for something. a second. Kid. <laughs> Shut up for a second. Lamara is a djinn. Like the child? Like the child. How, how do you know? I spoke to the kid. She's turning into a djinn. She's not a mystic. You're trusting a jinn. She died. On its word? She she died. We didn't save her. You ever hear, like in a hospital when someone dies and the doctors bring them back? She died. We brought her back. That's why she can sense mystics. She's... She's not a mystic. That's why Tal was like that. I think it was Lamara's abilities, which I don't think she understands yet, and whatever this power you say that Tal has. <clears throat> and I don't know if you caught it last night, but Tal said she talked to the djinn and that he visited Kassar. And he, like, thumbs towards the window. So whatever that was and the reason he's here, I'm pretty sure is as a result of the kid. So what does that mean about Lamara? I don't know. I asked the kid if he was gonna, if she was gonna turn out like him and he said he wasn't sure. Because he has something that... Because she has something that he didn't. And I think that's the crew. Is it? <laughs> as far as Malik is telling people... <laughs> Samir, you can roll. <laughs> and empathy. You want me to, uh, want me to roll against roll this? You can roll manipulation because that's a super huge lie. I fail. <laughs> Just straight empathy. Um, uh, or it, it would be it would be it would be manipulation. I think it's manipulation it's, it's as versus well, each yes. other. It's it's each other. Yeah, against each other. <sighs> Perfect. Great. Great. The both of you You're stare the at best each other. Brother. Yeah, you stare at each other. Um, your brother might be lying. It might be true. It's probably just more of a shock that he's like, hey. Our doctor's actually kind of a jinn. She's turning into a jinn. Uh, again, misinformation, but close enough. What, what do you think that we should do? I mean, do we care about that man? Uh, that was the last guy to see the emissary alive. So, kind of? He... And now he's in the hands of the person who knows everything about us. To be clear, that was Kasha, right, Dot? Uh, it was Kasha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said uh, the, the adjudicator that the was The adjudicator, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who recognized I, I, Kasha. I, I assumed, fed, but... Uh, yeah, fed the uh, uh, sedative. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, sh she knows that he was the last person to see the emissary alive. She's just cleaning up all, everybody's mess. Probably. But the question is, whose mess? Is she like Sue? Is she like you? Who does she respond to? Who, who does she take the orders from? Um, I'll tell you this. The, the tracks that I found, the, the traces of who cut the security, 
they're not consortium and they weren't syndicate. As I said before, they were the Order of the Pariah, so... Still a council seat, but just a different council seat. Right. Yeah, one that is slaughtering a group of people. They are kind of zealots, depending on who you talk to. So I can't say I'm surprised, but I mean, at the same time, it is it is kind of wholesale slaughter. But if what Tal thinks is right, and that it is Kasha, and Kasha knows we have Lamara, she can't stay on the ship. What are we going to do? Just leave her here in... No, we have to bring her with us. Oh. Yeah. Which is why I'm letting you know about the Jin situation. Does she know? I don't think so. We had a conversation. Why did you tell her? She senses that she's different than everyone else, but I don't know how much of her mental state is her mental state and how much of it is the gin. And I don't want to say anything that tips the balance. But not saying something will tip the balance when she finds out and she doesn't hear it from you. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Leek, you could be putting all of us in danger. <laughs> alright, 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 alright. You have to tell her. Okay, alright. I'll find a time to like, tell her. Like today, because we don't want her to end up like... And he kind of gestures towards where Jahar was. Well, I, I mean, I think it's different. Like, he was attacked by a djinn and she's... It, yeah, regardless. Much worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would remember the stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the stories. Um, okay. All right. Um, what it, What was that with Sewell? Just so, like... Wait, what? What was what with Sewell? I mean, you were a little aggressive. I just assume I just... it's because you have a crush on Tal. But also, did you see his arm glow? Yes. It's probably um, whatever tattoo that he got when we were in the club. Tamir, I know that uh, clubs aren't your scene. Um, tattoos don't glow. Uh, have you have you seen like space tattoos, <laughs> dude? I mean, they don't all glow. They do not all glow. <laughs> also, a question: Did they know I got a tattoo? Samir does. Okay. Samir does. Did you... You said that. Samir made a comment when you met them outside the club. Like, after he came to get you, he came out and he was like, he was getting a tattoo or there was some, like, yeah, cheeky... There was, yeah, okay, so cool. I can't remember. You got a tattoo but you definitely said zero. shut up and and continue yeah, on. Yeah, but they have zero mm -hmm. knowledge of, like, what it is. You okay. have shown it off. They definitely didn't know that it glowed. Like, there was some things there. Fuck, man. I don't even know shit. I'm just, I'm just saying, it. Uh, tattoos don't normally glow. And that one glowed when you touched it. So it doesn't glow all the time. And you're different know. than other people. Yes, probably. It was... Uh, sometimes when I touch things, uh, they react in a very different way. Maybe we should look into that. The tattoo. That is not... the least of a... Well, that tattoo, maybe, but what are we going to do here? We are now... And he kind of just gestures to the monolith that just fills the pilot's chamber. Malik does a few, like, keystrokes on the, the, the computer we have on the ship. And he, like, pulls up a diagram and he says, um, well, this is a thing. Uh, and he, like, shows him nanites. And he's like, if, if they're tracking Sewell. There are worse things than tracking. There are, but that's the first thing that Malik thinks about. Oh no, why? He, he goes, if, if they're if they're tracking Sewell, it would help to know that we're being watched. So then just go talk to him. Have have Lamara remove it or replace it's, the arm. I okay. Wow. Uh we'll that we'll we'll also do that. Shell that for now. Right. Uh anyway, uh 
Uh, what place the are? <laughs> like Malik is, Malik is very taken aback by how nonchalant that was, uh, and he absolutely masks his uncomfortableness with the uh, with with some with some jokes. He says, yeah, uh, "Yeah, man, we'll we'll talk about that later. Uh, go take that space ass to go see Tal. Check on her." And he like clicks and unlocks the door. When you make it to the med bay, uh, Tao and Lumara are in an embrace. Um, Tao seems to be rather upset. I'm just cleaning, by the way. Yeah, uh, Tamir will, will r- rush in um, and like reach out. Tao's straight I'll, sobbing. I, 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 I will, I'll <laughs> stop. Lumara looks at, at Sul and goes, um, we should do the thing out there. What? Come, come on, so we're gonna do the thing. And she like grabs you and drags you out of the med bay, leaving Tamir and Tal alone. I'm like, what the, ow, fuck, don't, damn it. And then I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'll leave. Stop talking, let's go. As soon as she like lets go of me and starts to walk away, Tal immediately just starts like rubbing her face. And she's probably not doing a very good job. I think Tamir's gonna like go over and just kind of like offer her some of his shemak and try to like, Get in her tears a bit. Oh. It, 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 it is okay. Uh, but are you okay? What happened? Are you in pain? She looks so killed, surely. What do you mean? Well, Lumara accused me, and and it started a, a vision, I I guess. Um, I could see through Shuli's eyes again, and she was she was dying, and Jalissa came in and said she was sorry, and she puts she put something in her and 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 it killed it killed her and and i felt it and and she's dead i don't think we're gonna get much from her eyes anymore Maybe we don't need her eyes. You can reach out to her. You could reach out to Jalessa. Reach out to the person who killed her? Tell my sister I'm coming. (laughs) She seemed... seemed sad that she had to do it, but she didn't seem adverse to it. Not really. It's it's like there was no hesitation there. Maybe she was just doing what she needed to do. She's your sister. Do you really believe that she would do awful things but for attention? To me, are people do awful things because they feel like they don't have any other choice sometimes. Sometimes they don't have any other choice, Tal. I just don't know if this was her not having any choice or if this was her covering her ass I don't know but maybe it was mercy Shelly was so weak I could feel it Tamir I I could feel her weakness. The 
They're doing awful things to people there. I don't... <sighs> we have to stop them. We will. We'll do whatever it takes. And we'll figure out which side your sister is actually on. But I just hope we don't figure it out too late. And the camera cuts to Sewell and the doctor who has kind of just pulled you up to the side. Uh, she's kind of giggling knowing that they're hoping in her mind that they're like totally making out the doctor's office right now and they're like totally clearly not uh but she is imagining that that's what's happening and um she goes isn't it just the cutest i like pull away from like don't fucking drag me but i'm dragging it out of there they needed to you know talk i don't know why you keep making motions while you're talking it's confusing me you know like talk you're still making motions and any anyway are you feeling better? He takes a you pause have an empty drip bag on your back, and she like rips it off. You hear the tape? You dripped it clean. Oh shit! Which was just an empty bag taped to your back, and she pulls it off. And she goes and she plucks it from your arm. Listen, um, thanks. I want to apologize for the things that I said previously. What did you say? I don't know. Apparently, it was wrong though. Okay. Okay. So, apology accepted. Um, fuck. I, I guess now is a better time than that ever. We are here now. Uh, he like rummages through his pockets a little bit, and he pulls out uh his mercury knife from the first season, the original one. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "You got a lot of things going on with you," and I don't know if anyone said anything. But you seem to be weird around blood. I'm not weird. Uh, so. I'm very comfortable around blood. Yeah, you can she say comfortable. To I'm going to say a little weird. You kind of get how I get when before I pull a trigger and I have to kill somebody. So. You kill a lot of people. He kind of thinks for a minute. Do you save a lot of people? I guess it depends. Well. It kind of depends on me too. Okay. Here and I and I give her my mercury knife. She kind of holds it the knife. Her, her hand that, is, a, is a foreign object. If you press the button, it will cauterize any things that you do, so you shouldn't have to deal with raw blood You're if you have to. You're giving this to me. Let's don't make a big deal out of it. It's just so that you know you don't have to deal with the blood. It will, it will, it will boil up the blood and. She like clicks the button on off on whoa, off. Whoa, whoa, stop, it, stop, like, stop, 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 stop. Only use it when you need to because you know. Listen, you you were worried about your value if people cared. That knife was given to me by my father when he accepted me into his family. S fuck, I don't know. So just take that as whatever you want. Just She smiles. It's like really cute smile. No. Like she knows you're struggling no, in this like stop. communication moment. Stop. She holds it more like a bouquet of flowers and less like a knife. Just um, protect yourself. And she smiles a little bit and she says, thank you so much. Nobody's ever given me a weapon before. Soul takes a moment. I, where do I store it? He takes a moment and just realizes, fuck. Um, and she goes, oh, oh, I know. Um, and she kind of tucks it in the back of her pants so it's like hidden by her doctor's jacket, by like the white jacket. And she goes, look, it's like it's not even there. Yeah. <laughs> just, again, use it when you need to. Don't fuck around with the button. Uh, and hopefully you won't have any more psychotic episodes with blood with that. Yeah. It's fine. By the way, if you want me to look at that tattoo, um, don't he like he, have me, he me immediately like changes he immediately changes his face. Don't there's no tattoo. Um, 
I, I think I should I should just look at it. No. Okay. When you're ready, I'll look at it. I turn around and start walking away. Bye. And she kind of like watches you go as she kind of stands alone. And we watch as Lumaro crosses the ship past the med bay where she knows that they're having a moment all the way back up to the cockpit where um, Malik is. She returns your, like the piece of the cloth or whatever, the scarf that you used earlier, she hands it back to you. Um, and she goes, still gave me a knife. I don't have time to unpack that. And she goes, oh, uh, that. What? No. She can, what? I, I, okay. I, I didn't say anything. It wasn't me. I need, I need you to sit down for a second. And he actually gets up out of the comm station and, like, points to his seat. Oh. <laughs> she thinks you're pulling the chair back for her. She totally sits down. Thanks for your favorite letter. Great. Uh, he, like, thanks wow, for us. what it feels like to be the pilot. I'm not the pilot. The pilot chair is over there. Oh, she um, changes chairs. Is this uh, what it feels like to be the pilot? Uh, yes. Uh, it, it is. And he, like, reaches over his, to- his comm station and hits that lock button again. Uh, and then walks over to her and says, um, we... Oh, Malik. No, no, no. We need to have a conversation. Um, okay. Really quick. Okay, I'm ready. So... Have you seen the... I love you too. Okay. Um... That was what you were going to say, right? Um, not in so many words. I was going to say something else entirely uh, different, but adjacent? Anyway. Um, okay, adjacent's fine. Yeah. It's like close. Sure. It, 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 it intersects, and she kind of uh, runs her fingers through your fingers. Okay. Um, do you remember, have you seen the kid that occasionally pops up and talks to Tal and is kind of creepy? Uh, remember when he, we were leaving the apartment? Did she come to the apartment? No, she didn't come to the apartment. Uh, he, no, he, she had gone. I feel like she had gone back to. The, she hasn't seen the child yet. Yeah, She's like, what kid are you I, talking I about? What do they so. look like? Um, it's it's not super important. Uh, I I had a talk with a kid, um, and he and he he knew about you. Okay. Um, so you know how when you were in the tube like an hour ago. And you said that you feel different, and that you are different. And I'm sick. Yes, that you said that you're sick. It says almost like embarrassing, like a doctor being sick. And and how I kept saying that you were a mystic, and how you kept saying that you weren't a mystic. Right, not a mystic. Right. Um. And and you remember how you died a little bit, but then you came back. Yes. I mean, yeah. if I remember, there's really nothing on the other side but darkness. Yeah, about the... Big side note, she did talk to the kid because she did go to the apartment and we interviewed her in the apartment and she gave us a lot of information and the kid came. And the kid came. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, she yeah. did lay eyes on the she, kid. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. She does know okay. the kid. Thank you, Lightning. I thought so. Yeah, I could, okay, okay, I, okay, so I thought she didn't I was, leave. I thought I was misremembering, but someone confirmed yeah. it, so we're that's, good. That's when I was mentioning, that's when the kid told me she was a gym. Um, cool. Yeah. So he says, yeah, the, the, the kid I talked to outside the apartment of the, oh, of yeah, the emissary. Oh, coming to my dreams. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the reason he keeps coming into your dreams, we'll unpack that later. Um, the reason he keeps coming into your dreams and the reason, um, you feel sick and the reason you can sense mystics, um, but you're not a mystic. Um, so apparently, uh, when a human dies and sees the darkness, uh, there's a chance that they can become a djinn. <laughs> You gotta like patch your chest. Um, Jin, <laughs> that's just in yeah, fairy so, tales. Um, the kid's a Jin. We found him on a. Uh, that's we silly. No, we found him when we jumped through the broken portal. 
And we brought him back with us. Malik, are you feeling okay? She checks your forehead for a fever. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm kind of sweaty. So, yeah, that's because we just, uh, two pilots just landed the ship. Uh, and we're she, not pilots, it she, turns out. She pats your head with the, the rag to, like... Okay. So, the kid, the Jin kid, thinks that you're also becoming a Jin because of your brush with the darkness, the same way that Malik and Tao became mystics. That's why you can sense them. And I think that's why the bad guys are after you. Malik, this isn't funny anymore. You're, you're basically calling me a demon. No, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you that's what the other demon said that you're becoming. He did say he did say that they're not all bad and that you might be a good jinn. But I'm Everybody knows there's no such thing as a good jinn. Well, I'm telling you this because it's we were planning to leave you on the ship as the doctor because you're the doctor and we wouldn't drag you into a dangerous jungle because it's dangerous. Right, cuz I should I should stay here to 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 doctor you. Yeah, but if you're your abilities and the people that are after you are here. So we can't leave you on the ship. We have to take you with us. Oh, Malik, I see what's going on here. Okay. You don't have... I know I said I was sick and it's really scary, but I've been around a lot of sick people. I'm going to be okay. Okay. And I see that... You're just struggling to tell me that you want me to come with you. Of course I'll come with you. And she kind of squeezes your hand tighter. Cool. Great. Um, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Uh, and he, he takes, he takes the, uh, the, the cutoff piece of Shemag that she was like holding and or handing to him. Uh, and he just like sighs and kind of rolls his eyes and says, yeah, you, you, you'll come with us, uh, into the woods, into the jungle. And, um, if you feel any kind of sickness or any weird things like, you know, an urge to kiss Tal and trigger any visions or any other oh, things don't with be jealous, Tamir. That wasn't like that. That's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, it, just, it could be like that with us. Just, just let me know if you feel any other, like, sicknesses or... You know, I heard the Kua jungle's really beautiful. Or, or any... Um, uh, any other weird urges or like... Okay, and she dives for your face. Oh, God. With her face. Oh, God. And as long as you will let her, she plants a massive kiss on you. I don't think he has the fortitude to stop it right now. I right. think it's completely unexpected and she just launches and he's she just a hundred percent taken aback, but he's absolutely like rigid and his arms yeah. are at his side. She plants this very, uh, very forward kiss on you. And when she's done, she holds your face in her hands and she says, I'll always come with you. Nick. And she hits the door button and it like slides open and you hear her scream down the ship. I'm coming with you all. Um, as she uh, begins suiting up to come with you because she thought she was going to be left behind. Oh, and the camera God. pans out, back out to the kind of centralized docking area where maybe because everybody's in their own moment, we miss the judicator coming back. This time, though, they're stopped by a rather uh, well-dressed woman and a man who carries um, a camera. They seem to be very clearly the news. Um, and they kind of run up on the on judicator Kasha. Um, and we see this kind of microphone being passed back and forth, and the audience hears what is uh, seemingly an impromptu and unexpected interview. Kasha um, looks rather uncomfortable in the limelight, but plays the part. And um, um, we hear this woman's voice. She says, I have with me Judicator Kasha from Coriolis, who is in charge of the current mysticides investigation. Now, my sources tell me that the victim of the shooting is, uh, that the victims of the shooting are happening in the basement of Coriolis, there in the cellar. Um, it is the so-called mystics that have been killed recently. Is that true, Judicator? This is correct. 
And then the mic comes back very quickly. Is it true that you have linked the events over the last few weeks to seven plus murders in just the last few days? This is correct. And is it true that the bodies that are surfacing or the bodies that are not resurfacing, including that of the ghost of Zena? And she passes it and he goes, I cannot answer that. Um, and she goes, well, is it probable that more bodies will surface during your investigation? Over a dozen new mystics have gone missing in the last week. Um, at least that's what the bulletin tells us. And there's kind of a look at the camera when she says that. Uh, Kasha, I will not speculate about the investigation at this time. Many of the new mystics choose to leave their old lives behind, which could be a factor contributing to the reported disappearances. Very much a bold-faced lie. What is your comment on the rumor that the first-come people are the only ones that have been affected by the mystic's disease? I cannot comment on that. Can't, won't, or aren't allowed to. Can't, as I don't have the answer. Going back to the six victims you have examined so far, what can you say about their backgrounds, Judicator Kasha? That it would appear on the surface that your rumor might hold up so far, but that does not mean, thank you, Judicator Kasha. Now back to you, and the camera cuts. The camera cuts to a live newsroom on Coriolis. The news anchor sits behind a desk and says, thank you so much for that interesting uh, interview, uh, correspondent Kuhar. But today on Coriolis, our hearts are heavy. The bulletin has printed dire news. The emissary is missing, assumed dead. Riots have broke out in the lower levels of the cellar. Coriolis is currently under quarantine. Curfew has been put into place. The news anchor says, Coriolis, now is a time for you to hug your families and to stay indoors. Protect those that you love most. And And then you see this like, doo, 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 doo. this just in, breaking news. Uh, and they kind of like pull the little thing out. Direct from the bulletin, it seems that Jahar Kassar has lost their mind within the night. An illness has overcome them and they are currently being held on the surface. And so we watch kind of as this pans through and the camera leaves the newsroom out to the floor of Coriolis. It is empty except for a few people who take up arms to fight for their place, armed soldiers and militants all over, trying to push people into their homes, telling them to leave. And as it pans down the core of Coriolis at this exorbitant speed and drops to the cellar, the doors of an elevator open and we see mass chaos. Gunfire, ga, 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 ga. Somebody's body flops forward as it falls. Somebody is tackled and cuffed. Another person is shot blankly in the head. A series of um, guards line three people up and fire on them. Pow, pow, pow. And as the five of you prepare to leave your vessel and journey forth into Kua, what you've left behind in your wake, though not directly caused by you, but there nonetheless, is a destroyed Coriolis, a place that is fighting itself. Civil war that has broke out amongst its people. The announcement of the missing emissary is enough to shake anyone. Now there's open news. More importantly, that news reports that the new, uh, the, the very sick Jahar Kassar was the last man to be seen with the emissary. And something dark reaches out across the third horizon tonight. A life has been taken. Smooches have been had. 
and a seriousness falls over a mission, a mission many, uh, uh, many moons in the making. Started on Coriolis, but it will not end there. And as the camera pans away from Coriolis, showing Kua, beautiful green and blue in the background, somewhere out in the distance, a prayer whispers out. Please, watch over her. She has given everything to see that these people that I may not be forgiven for taking her life. But she is too good for what they have planned for her. Be with her. See her through to the other side. Lay in tears. And it's the voice of Tao's sister that echoes out into the darkness. A simple prayer, reaching for an icon. Was it heard? You don't know. At least not until next week. When we come back for the next episode of Coriolis here on the Moon Canoe. Man, part of me just wants to like end the show. Just be like, boop. <laughs> like that's a, such a succinct ending. Um I kind of feel like that would have been most appropriate. Yeah. Eight to black. <laughs> but here we are. Oof. We did it. I got through all of the corruption bars and caused a lot. There's some shit that went down. Here. here we are. We are sweaty, concerned. I am. I'm sweating. Besmooched. Yep. We are besmooched. Let's go around. Uh, quickly Oof. do our, our, our final thoughts. Get out of here. We'll go record a short uh, after show. Uh, and then be sure to tune in at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern to Gnome Brew tomorrow to hear uh, everyone talk about this show. Um, oh, are you joining us too? Are you join us? I mean, I will. I'll stay awake for it. I know. I know. Paul yes! was supposed to be there. I'm uh, yeah. Let's, 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 so let's, let's do. We, we were expecting Paul. Let's and, do. Let's and do everyone. Dot, but you it's, too. So it's gonna be really short. I have a game immediately after. That's fine. It's okay. I have to work, so, so we, okay. we're gonna have to hit. We're gonna have to get yeah. mm -hmm. all of our dabs out of the way mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. and go straight mm -hmm. into Coriolis. Talk. Yeah. You yep. hear that? Yeah. No. No dabs. We'll just get just Coriolis talk. Um, uh, so tomorrow's just going to be all spoilers all day yeah. so that we can get through Coriolis talk. And so the whole thing is spoiler so warning. So let's go around quickly. Uh, 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 Aris, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? <laughs> Hi, I'm Aris Savad. You actually see who I look like today. Um, I make uh, travel accessories and gaming accessories uh, for everyone. You can find the stuff that I make at arissavad.com. Um, you can also find me random mornings, uh, normally Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but whenever the fuck we feel like it over on Gnome's channel at 9 a.m. Eastern for some Gnome Brew, where we drink coffee and talk shit, dab all day, and, uh, just, you know, get started for the day. Gross. Um, you can also find me here on Thursdays, of course, and on Sundays, you can find me on Open for Adventure uh streaming on twitch f at 4 p.m eastern time where we are playing a homebrew uh fifth edition campaign in a homebrew setting it's a lot of fun just as dramatic i play a completely different character uh and it's so much fun hell yeah Come join uh speaking of gnome who are you where can we find you on the internet and what are you up to i mean i don't know Eris pretty much said like everything already find me on twitch twitter and instagram at nomadic um yeah uh catch us tomorrow morning and i have a new show tomorrow morning uh after uh at at new at new at one at one eastern time we are going to be playing uh the lost minds of Intelver on cantrip breakers uh with some completely new players uh so i'm really excited to to introduce the world of dungeons and dragons to them so pretty pretty stoked for that I don't want to say more importantly, but more importantly, on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, Gnome has a show called Rewind 89. I'm trying to be fast. I don't dude. care. If you think he loves <laughs> space, if you think he loves space, he also really, really loves Tales of the Loops. Go check that out. But also a player in that show. Uh, Paul, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? Hello. My name is Paul at Inwit123. You can find my Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Um, you can find me here on Thursdays. You can find me on on Gnome's channels on Tuesdays. You'll see me tomorrow morning 
on Gnomebrew where we talk about a lot of stuff. Starting sometime in the next two weeks or so, I'm starting a small little project called Fireside Adventures where I take up uh, random people uh, and I do like a one and a half hour one-on-one -on -one session with them and hope, I'm, I'm trying to push for new players where I help them build characters, give them a, one quick little encounter and just kind of be a one, like a speed dating one-on-one D&D &on -one thing. So if you're interested, um, we'll figure out how you can sign up. But yeah, that's me. I'm Paul. Love that. Yeah. Yeet. Hell yeah. Uh, last but not least, Dot, who are you working with? I do on the internet. What are you up to? Dot, you can find me everywhere as Little Red Dot. I tell stories. I roll dice. Um, I do it on my channel on Wednesdays right now for a um, really beautiful uh, psychedelic fantasy game called uh, Overlight. Um, and then I'm here on Thursdays. I'm over on Roll For It for VTM on Saturdays if you'd like my dark side, that's where it gets to come out. Um, and a lot of other places. So just follow me on social media. And if you don't do social media, come join the Unmade Discord. You can chat with me there. Yeah. Where we officially, everyone, as of like seconds ago, have a no space countdown. For those of you that need your time counted yeah. down for you. From oh space day to my space God, day, I just one. saw yep. that. There's also some great gifts of Paul uh, to add to the gift great collection, gifts of Paul. which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Make sure it. if you guys took clips, go drop your clips in yeah. Discord. Just come chat with me there. Because um, yeah, I, I hang out there. Um, <laughs> and that's it. And what about you, Mike? Uh, I'm me. You guys know where to find me. Uh, and thank you guys so much for all the tips. Uh, thank you so much for blowing up the corruption bar. Uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, Twitch subscribe, go to our Patreon, check us out on Discord, all that fun stuff. We will see you guys tomorrow on Gnome Brew, next week for more Void. Uh, so from all of us to you, bye-bye.